Alrighty, welcome back guys. So we are still waiting on our cornmeal delivery. I was hoping the truck would show up. He's supposed to come this morning. Uh, he actually had a breakdown. He was supposed to show up yesterday and he had a breakdown and he ran out of time that he's allowed to drive. So he said he would be here first thing in the morning and it's nine o'clock and he's still not here. So I was hoping he was gonna make it so I could show you guys some of that, but I got the lid open for him. So all he'll have to do is back up and turn the spout and dump the three tons of cornmeal in there. I'm just hoping we pass him on the way to the field because if he doesn't show up today, I don't know. The cows are gonna be furious. So we are changing things up today. We are gonna be mowing with the Kubota. Um, no real reason, it's just the International was hooked up to the rake and the Kubota didn't have anything on it. And it's been a while since I've mowed with the Old Faithfuls. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. If you guys are new here, I'm Taylor and I work on a dairy farm in central Maine. And I make videos all about that, so if you enjoy that kind of thing, please don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you guys join us. Um, got my whole tractor cab ready, got a drink, half and half, some snacks, just in case. It's actually a decent sized field that we're going to be doing. It's going to take us about two hours, just about two hours. So we'll be out there for a while, probably until noon time. so that's why I brought the snacks, just in case I get hungry. And I'm really excited to mow with the Kubota again. If you are new here, this is the 2005 Kubota M95S, and that's about 95 horse, 86 PTO, I believe. Don't quote me on that, I think that's what it is. And it has 4,100 hours on it. Still runs like a top, never had any engine work done to it. We just got the throttle fixed a while ago, so now we can actually mow with it. without all that international power. For some reason has gone crazy this year. I don't know if it really likes wet weather or what, but we've had a lot of that this year. It's not a problem. It doesn't bother the cows. It's actually quite high in protein. I was looking it up the other day and it's actually like almost 17% protein, which is kind of strange. You don't think of the weed being particularly high in protein, but there's not a terrible amount of it anyway. You can see that most of it is just this red clover and 
Timothy mix. It's not a particularly heavy field, but we did want to get it done because we're going to have a beautiful stretch of weather. I think the next week, at least, is just supposed to be sunny, low 70s, really, really nice weather. We're not sure if we can make dry hay. It hasn't worked out yet. Um, but if the conditions are just right and we don't get too much of a dew, which I don't really expect to happen because we usually get a pretty heavy dew this time of year, but if we don't, we might actually get some dry hay done and that um, will be really nice because this is just really good stuff. Brent is actually gone this morning. If you're new here, Brent is my boss. Uh, he had some sort of doctor's appointment or something, so he's gone to that. But he'll be back in time to tether. He's gonna be tethering with the um, International, I think. And then I'm gonna switch with him and he's gonna mow and I'm gonna finish tethering. Excited to finally have a heyday. Let's get going. All right, so with this, we are going to be pushing this over, which is a slower gear. You see that turtle gear right here? If you push this over and hold it, you can see this green light change into turtle gear. So that's what we want. We're gonna put it in third with the button on, which makes it slower as well. We're gonna go around the first time doing the edges of the field with the button on, and then we'll take it off and do it in third with the button off, which is just a little bit faster every other time we go around so we can finish a little bit more quickly. Sometimes I can even put it in fourth. It's not terribly thick, but this quota doesn't have an excessive amount of horsepower. So uh, we'll just see how it does in third for now. We've got the mower all folded out. We just need to turn the PTO on. Um, by the way, this glass back is usually not missing, but we had to take it out because one of the springs that pushes the door back up, you know, holds the window up, uh, pistons, I guess you'd call it, one of those actually got bent somehow so we had to switch it out and you couldn't switch it out without taking it off we're gonna put the new pistons on and then put the window back in when it starts getting cooler but for right now it's not really a big deal but we're gonna have to rev it up a little bit so that it doesn't stall out the tractor when we turn the PTO on
plenty of exercise chasing the camera.
some little cup holder, so it just clamps on to the, like a pipe or something, and you just set your cup in it. And it works perfect. Now I no longer have to try to figure out where to put my drink. So thank you very much if you sent that. I'm not really sure who sent it because it didn't have a name on the package. So thank you so much if you're watching. Uh, I use it all the time now. This is just a perfect time of year. It's so cool. Oh, the sun's shining. Just, I love it. So it is much later on in the afternoon. We actually didn't do anything else. I went home for a late lunch. Came back at 3.30 to do some bailing in that piece that Brent had just mowed. We were going to feed right out. And that is when things went terribly wrong. So the baler, for some reason, started putting on net wrap like as soon as I started bailing, which would have been fine if the monitor had said that it was doing it, because usually that's what happens. It'll put it on and the monitor will say net runs but not tying, which means it's running the net wrap. Um, but the monitor, for some reason, froze. So it wasn't telling me that it was running net wrap on and I was still bailing hay, so it was just wrapping everything around the rollers. So by the time it started sounding funny and I shut everything down, we had a terrible mess going on. So that's what that bale is right there. Um, the side effects of an awful day. It took us about 20 minutes to get it undone. We finally got it undone. And it's been a nightmare. Plus side, they did bring cornmeal, so the cows are gonna be happy. So we had to cut all that net and hay off the rollers. We had to get down in the front of it. So we had to unhook the net wrap that was in there. Everything just had to come together. I would say perfectly, but it was like the opposite of perfectly for that to happen. The monitor had to freeze. Um, there had to be leftover net wrap for some reason in there for everything to get grabbed and pulled in. And then it was wrapping hay and net wrap around everything. And like I said, what should have been a 10 minute job, it's now 4.30 and we started at 3.30. So it took us an hour to bail three bales, messed up on the second one. Um, the others, it did just fine, but yeah, good times. So um, it now sounds a little funny because it for some reason bent one of the plates. So I'll take you guys up and show you that tomorrow because we've got to milk the cows. There's the piece of junk. <laughs> Just kidding, sometimes it's a good bailer. Right there. See, you need, you need to pull that corner. Huh? You need to pull that very far oh. corner down. It's hitting right there. Yeah. Making a horrible rubbing sound. Yeah, right there. There you go. You got it. That's yeah. enough. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Bent it and it was rubbing and making a awful thumping. It's quite close right in the middle. That's what I saw that was kind of bent. Hold on a second. Right in the middle is awful close. That looks pretty good. There, try that. Every time the tailgate's open, it gives me flashbacks. Boy. When it used to run that in all the time mm. for no reason. You ready? You're all set. Okay. Did you check the oiler? No. We should though. All set for another disaster. <laughs> Thanks for jinxing me. so we can see what's going on.
and it did a perfect job this time. But naturally, we hit a bump and the hood closed, so I couldn't see what was going on. I like to have that open just for now because for some reason, if it ever screws up, it's gonna be on a new roll net wrap, and that's what we have in there, and it has been not doing well the last, well, really just yesterday. Uh, it screwed up the first bail, but it almost always does that uh, from when you change the wrap over. It did good after that. It probably did 45 bales. And then this yesterday, of course, happened, and that was a whole thing. So hopefully it keeps working. I'm going to be finishing this right here. Um, we're going to be feeding this out. If there's too many here, we'll wrap a couple of them and just feed it to the heifers. It's not terrible stuff. It's actually pretty decent. It's first crop mixed in with second crop. It's not bad stuff, but... Brent is going to be coming back. He brought me up here specifically so he could check on the hay that we did yesterday. We tethered it twice yesterday. Once, obviously you guys saw me do that, and then he had his brother come out and tether it around 3.30. That second ted really helped it a lot, and now today it's almost ready. Brent's going to get the tether right now, and he's gonna do this one last time. And then at around one o'clock, we're both gonna come out and rake it, and we'll bail it up, and we finally got some dry hay. There goes the mowing machine right there. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love cropping and bringing you guys along with us. You probably can't tell I'm most of the time smiling on a tractor, but if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and comment down below. Keep it real, keep farming, and I hope you join us in the next video. Bye guys.